We're running a Holly, um, it's actually an LS2 style throttle body that we flipped upside down so that the uh, cable connection matches our throttle a little bit easier. And we're using an Edelbrock um, elbow to feed down into the Edelbrock intake manifold. And this intake tube has one more piece attached to it uh, for the turbo system. It's the Turbo Smart blow-off valve. And the purpose of a blow-off valve is to relieve pressure on the intake side. Uh, for example, this car is going to have a, a manual shift. It's got a TKO 600 five-speed manual. And if you're going to be driving this, you know, you step on the gas, you spool up the turbo, you step on the clutch, you put it in gear, you take off. Well, when you step on the clutch to go to the next gear, you get off the throttle. It will close that throttle blade. Well, if the system's under boost, when you close that throttle blade, that boost builds up in there and it's got nowhere to go. It can actually reverse and stop the turbo from spinning. So rather than have that happen, we have a blow-off valve that will know as soon as that throttle closes, it's got a little vacuum line that senses an increase in pressure and it will purge off the, uh, the extra boost so that the turbo stays spooled up so that when you open the throttle again, you've got immediate boost coming back in. And that's another trick piece from TurboSmart. They sell those in a variety of different sizes and pressures, again, to match your particular application. Now, there's a few more miscellaneous items that go along with a turbo system, and one is supplying oil to the turbo itself. These things require a constant source of oil uh, to keep that bearing running smooth, especially because they, you know, there's a lot of heat involved. And in our case, uh, we found an oil pressure takeoff on the front of the block, and we made a hard line that will supply the oil from the block into the top of the turbo. And that oil coming into the turbo is pressurized by the engine oil pump, but you've got to rely on gravity in addition to any residual pressure to get the oil out of the turbo back into the engine. So the bottom of the turbo has an area for a drain where we welded an AN fitting onto a plate and bolted it to the turbo. And then we're using a Dash 10 size Earl's ProLite 350 braided hose to come out of the turbo. And we've got a port on the side of the block where the factory fuel pump used to go. We, you know, we made another AN fitting for that and the oil will drain back into the pan that way. One of the challenges on this car is heat management. This turbo system is going to create a lot of heat, so we had to make sure that our cooling system was going to be up to the task of managing all that heat, especially with the restriction of an intercooler in front of our radiator. So we talked to the people at Be Cool because we know they already make radiators that are designed to be direct drop-in fit style radiators for a variety of American muscle cars. And sure enough, they make one that fits the 71 Olds. And in this case, we had them do their 1,000 horsepower module. And this consists of a custom-built aluminum radiator. It's got the tanks welded on and it's ready to go. Uh, their custom aluminum fan shroud on the backside, a pair of spall electric fans, and the package also comes with one of their uh, radiator caps and an overfill can. This system is guaranteed by Be Cool to cool a car capable of making a thousand horsepower. And if we crank the boost up real high on this Olds, we certainly shouldn't have any problem doing that. And then we engineered the upper radiator shroud and sides of the core support to funnel the air through the radiator and not go around it. And we did that by modifying the original Oldsmobile top radiator cover um, and shortened it and added some curved sides that roll down to manage the airflow. But at the same time, it still looks like it might be a stock original piece. So after we had all of our parts made, uh, we cleaned up all the metal and we sent everything to Extreme Powder Coating in Minnesota where they applied a 2200 degree black ceramic coating to all of the hot parts. So the exhaust manifolds, our crossover tube underneath, all of our exhaust stuff that led up to our stainless uh, MagnaFlow exhaust kit, the turbo housing itself, it all received this really slick looking black um, high temp ceramic coating. The cool side, uh, which is the tubing on the intake side, it received a coat of Eastwood uh, high temp engine paint. It's their new nano ceramic stuff. It's good to 600 degrees. And then as far as the, uh, the plumbing and the hoses, we have Earl's Anotuff black anodized fittings. That ProLite 350 hose is black. 
the block of the engine is black and the cylinder heads and everything are, are aluminum. The intake and that intake elbow we painted with that silver high temp stuff. So we've got kind of this industrial looking black and silver uh, combination with good coatings where they need to be so that this will stay looking nice for a long time. One of the last things we did to manage that underhood heat was to wrap the hot components of our turbo system with some products from DEI. Uh, the main one is their T6 titanium turbo shield, a blanket that basically goes over the turbine housing of our turbocharger, and it's designed to keep heat inside the turbo for better turbo performance and also to keep the underhood temperatures a little bit cooler. And this product is pretty interesting because it's actually made from pulverized lava rock. It has a titanium color, but it's not actually made of titanium. And what they do is they get this pulverized lava rock and then it is spun into fibers and then woven into this blanket that securely wraps around the turbo. They make them for a couple different size turbo applications. Ours is the big one, the T6 but they make them for smaller ones as well. And it form fits around that uh, turbine housing, and then you wire it tight around the base using some stainless steel wire. And it's designed to handle 1800 degrees of contact temperature. So if your turbo gets real hot, you know, this thing should be able to stand it. I mean, it's made from volcanoes for crying out loud. And then on the outside, if it gets near radiant heat, it can handle those temperatures up to like 2,500 degrees. We're pretty confident that it's going to help keep those underhood temperatures down. And then on the tubing leading out of the turbo, we also wrapped all that stuff with some DEI uh, header wrap, which is made from that same lava rock technology to keep the heat inside the tube and not radiating underneath the hood. The trick to installing the wrap is to only have about a one quarter inch overlap as you wrap it around your tubing. But if you take your time, you'll be able to get it to lay out real nice. And this again, uh, tie wraps to the pipe with some stainless steel wraps so that they won't deteriorate from the heat. So from here, we have to finish off our fast EFI fuel injection system install. And this car is being powered with an ISIS system uh, which is an intelligent multiplex wiring system. We're going to finish the install of that and then uh, we get to run it and begin the tuning process. <laughs>